my next guest, who is joining me from Yahoo Sports. He covers both college football and basketball for Yahoo Sports. He's also a co-host of Yahoo Sports College podcast. Uh, Chris Brockman, um, Pete Thamel, when I asked him if he had a landline, you know, we asked people, do you have a landline? Yeah, absolutely. Can you call us on a landline? It's clear. Uh, his response to me uh, on uh, direct message on Twitter, quote, unfortunately, I can't call you from 1996. This is his response. Wow. <laughs> so I'm assuming joining us from the best line he's got in 2020, Pete Thamel here on the Rich House. Show. How are you, Pete? Rich, I'm good. I, I just told your uh, producer who, who called me that a, yes. a smoke signal uh, I can do. Morse code, if you want to communicate Come by on, that, is, is available. Wow. Um, you know, I've, I wow. try to be flexible to help here. Calling me from 1996 is not, right. you know what? <laughs> That, that's not a bad thing because that means uh, Michigan's about to go to the national championship game the next year. So let's keep talking, I guess, from 1996. Um, and l- let us start with my alma mater. What is uh, the latest, best you can tell, with Michigan-Ohio State set for Saturday? Michigan paused all of its football activities until today. I- is Michigan back at it or is Saturday's big game with Ohio State in jeopardy right now, Pete? Good, good question. Thank you. Um, I think the biggest question in the sport right now, this is uh, one of Michigan's more relevant moments in, in, in recent years. Ouch. Uh, the, the uh, sorry, just had to, had to, had to put it. It's all the, good. The, all indications I heard this morning from Michigan is that they're preparing to practice. So you don't want to get too excited about anything, but that is a, that is a positive. Uh, it's been optimism and positivity. I don't want to say positive because that can be taken the wrong way in 2020 parlance. Right. Positivity and optimism for Michigan to practice today. Uh, I don't know if they've decreed that yet, but they were preparing to do so when I talked to a couple of people there this morning. So, yeah, Michigan playing is a is a huge key to, uh, you know, a, a lot of things in the Big Ten right now. Well, a, a huge key to a lot of things in the Big Ten because of the rule that a team needs to play six games in order to compete for the conference championship. And uh, if they haven't played those many games, then – um, one would think uh, the college football playoff committee would not uh, view that positively, with positivity, to use your phrase. What about the concept of Barry Alvarez, the uh, major domo there in Wisconsin, uh, and a de facto, if you will, commissioner of this league, uh, <laughs> saying that we could just change the rule? What's the status right there, Pete? Well, I just think it's it's obvious, right? The Big Ten is not going to hurt the Big Ten for a rule they made up for no particularly good reason right. three months ago, right? right? There was a lot of money at stake at a time when people need money um, with, with a playoff spot. There's also just prestige, and nothing would, would burn the Big Ten more than, uh, than you know, say, two SEC and two ACC schools, uh, or one, one ACC school and one moonlighting as an ACC school um, getting, no. in the, getting in the playoff. Like, that, the Big Ten is not going to self-sabotage over uh, – over this so look like we, we talked about this on our, our yahoo sports podcast uh last night and we were, we were laughing just because of course the big 10 is going to capitulate to Ohio state and what they need and i would like to think they would do it for northwestern or rutgers or whoever it is but they are not going to rule in a way that hurts their best team or what we perceive at this point to be their best team it, from getting in the playoff. They need games. They're going to get them games. Games will be played. So I, uh, I, I'm i not, you know, I, I think it's almost like a foregone conclusion. I like Barry Alvarez for saying the obvious things out loud, right? We're, we're in an era where, especially in college sports, uh, I always joke that it's, the, it's hard to get people to tell you obvious things. Well, that's obvious. So thank you, Barry, for just saying it out loud. Yeah, he did. And, you know, with the ultimate of respect, I mean, you know, I know Nebraska's parents were, were very vocal, and I know – uh, Jim Harbaugh was vocal about wanting to play. Isn't playing this season at all a, a one in, in part a capitulation to Ohio State, Pete, in the Big Ten? Yes, and I and I, I, uh, and give give them give them credit for steering it. Look, the season's been a rousing a rousing success. There was a lot of pessimism around the sport that it could be pulled off. It hasn't been perfect, but. Um, it, it, it's happening, and it, it's happening in large part because behind the scenes, you know, people like Gene Smith, people like Ryan Day, and again, Bill Moose, Scott Frost. You can go on and on. They weren't sure. they weren't the only ones who wanted to, but there were there were teams and programs that weren't excited about playing. And I don't think at this point anyone anyone regrets uh, this season having been played. Pete Thamel, Yahoo Sports, here on the Rich Eisen Show. Does Coastal Carolina's win over BYU crack the lineup here? I know I know we were all very 
you know, in uh, in the media writ large, like, hey, giving kudos to BYU and Coastal Carolina for scheduling each other on the fly. But does it, in, in the end, does it even matter if they're not going to expand off of four games, or four teams in the playoffs, Pete? Oh, I think it matters. I mean, what a great moment for uh, for, for Coastal Carolina. I've, I've spent a bunch of time down there over the uh, years. Joe Moglia, their old coach, has a great story. Uh, he was, uh, you know, he made a hundred million dollars uh, in in finance, and then retired and became a college football coach, and has really helped steer that program from FCS to one AA. So, like, I, I don't know, like, part of college football, like, what I don't want it to become is that it, you're irrelevant if you're not one of the four or one of the eight or whatever it ends up being becoming in the next few years, right? Like, that was just a great moment on a college campus, and you know, the Mormons versus mullets T-shirts, like that's what college football is and is about, you know. So. I, I thought it was awesome. Uh, loved the way that, you know, really with inferior talent, Coastal Carolina controlled the game uh, through just running the ball in 14 and 17 play drives and, you know, really did, really did a great job limiting Zach Wilson's opportunities. And, uh, yeah, BYU hurt itself with some with some big plays, and I think they uh, they didn't probably value every possession like a, per, like a precious gem like you have to do against schools that control the ball and control the clock. And, Coastal came out, and what a uh, what a night for the mullets. Well, I mean, I don't want my question to be, and and you you did you did appropriately respond to it, um, and, and I think I left it out there so it can be inferred that it doesn't matter um, for a, a program like Coastal Carolina to have a moment like that. Uh, moments are are, are, mm-hmm. are are wonderful, but the ultimate moment would be to have Coastal Carolina go up against Alabama and see how it flies, or Clemson. Or, or Notre Dame and see how it flies. Like, and, and, and that's what I, I guess is what I meant to, to say is that we, we should, just like Major League Baseball, Pete decided to expand their playoffs in COVID, just like the NHL and the NBA coming up with a different manner in which to, uh, to, to gain the, the playoffs um, in, in their bubbles, they come up with a different one. The NFL has got a plan in case it's necessary to change their playoffs. The fact that college football is right here saying, yeah, we're, we're just going to do the same thing, it, to me is insane. Like, it, it's a different season. There are different ways in which somebody can win. I'd love to see Cincinnati do their thing. I'd love to see Coastal Carolina do their thing if they deserve it. And instead, they're just going to be on some bowl game that maybe I'll watch. I'll be honest. You know, that's what I'm saying, yeah. I guess. What do you no, say? No, and that's, that's a great point. Hey, co- college athletics, like, when you really drill down on it, like, is is – just some of the least nimble. Well, it starts with what? Like, if the NFL wants to make a change, well, it starts with what? Roger Goodell. Owners call Roger Goodell. Who do you call in college sports? <laughs> you call Gene Smith, you call Barry Alvarez, call, there's nobody in charge. So it's hard for six separate entities with competing interests to all try and do something like this. And, you know, it's been funny because you talk to people about, like, changing the playoff. When's the earliest it could happen? Like, it is, it's all their, all the lame arguments are the same lame arguments they had against the playoff that I wrote about for, you know, a decade and a half before they finally changed to a playoff. Like, it's just, it's the same static institutional nonsense. And there's just so much bureaucracy and crap, quite frankly, in college athletics that prevents easy, obvious decisions from being made. Couple more for you here, uh, Pete. Pete Thamel, Yahoo Sports. I got one for you too, Rich. All so right. Go, well, uh huh. Yeah. Is it is it in the question I'm about to ask you about um, uh, the rumor, the hot rumor that was uh, going spreading like crazy amongst my uh, friends and uh, fellow alums uh, at Michigan that that Jim Harbaugh is on the verge of getting a contact contract extension with Michigan. Is that the question you're going to ask me, Pete? <laughs> It wasn't, but I'll, I'll answer that to the best I can, and then yes. I'll, I'll follow my answer with a question. Um, that's been buzzing. Um, no one's been able to kind of confirm that, but that wouldn't be a surprise. And all along, I really didn't think Michigan wanted to part ways with Jim Harbaugh. Um, if if they're going to do that, they'd probably be wise to do it before they play Ohio State on Saturday, as that as the outcome looks fairly predictable, even with. Obviously, the, the Buckeyes playing with a, a little bit of an inferior roster, especially on the offensive line. Um, but, yeah, the, you, I have never felt in this a strong institutional desire for Michigan to, to – to, this isn't Auburn, right? Like, there's a respect for what Harbaugh's done. If you look at the job he's done there holistically, yes. um, he's won 69% of his games. Yes. He's 
revive revenues from you know two pretty down eras back to back with uh, with with Brady and Rich. Kids so, graduate; they're uh, not they're not in trouble a lot at all. No, there's I, and I understand you know, and yeah. I, I'm sure the school president absolutely adores that in Jim Harbaugh. No question about that. Yeah, and I think the school president, it, because it's it's a university that has varied other interests, is almost uh, yep. There, there's maybe a little sense of ambivalence towards the football team having a down year because Pete, it's a pandemic and the you're, you're faculty correct. revolting, and I think know, you're spot on. And that's a good thing. That's a compliment to them. That's not a you know that's not that's not knocking them like they don't care enough. It's like yeah, there's a you're trying to run a multi billion dollar institution in a pandemic, so mm-hmm. there's other you know so there's potentially other other priorities. Um, what I want to ask you is this from from your chair, Rich. You're obviously far more plugged in the, into the NFL. Do you think there's a market for Jim Harbaugh right now in the NFL? I think the Jets uh, – I, I, I know Woody Johnson has been very um, enamored uh, with Jim and by Jim, and um, and he's coming back um, uh, officially in a couple of weeks uh, from his ambassadorship uh, overseas. That's the total wild card. I don't know if the Bears would be. I don't know what the Bears are going to do. Um, I think the Lions are already um, focusing on uh, the 49ers defensive coordinator and Robert Sala that you see. Uh, mm-hmm. He's from Dearborn. Yep. I, I don't know how much of a market there would be for for uh, Harbaugh and the pros right now. I don't know. Yeah, no, that's that's would be that's my, my sussing it out too, right now. For, yeah, that's my sense, too, from from calling around. I did a little bit earlier this season, but. There are, you know, there's going to be seven, eight NFL drops probably by the uh, by the end of this whole thing. So, it's uh, it, it it's interesting. It, would he be better off taking a year off? I don't or, think or, so. Yeah, he he loves to coach, Pete. You know that. No. You know, he's a total, and that's and that's the thing that was the most outrageous aspect about the whole waving the white flag, using COVID as, as a shield. You know. Uh, what Michigan is installed as a 30 point underdog or something insane like that for this week. And that mm-hmm. let's just use COVID to avoid the inevitable destruction. I mean, that is so antithetical to who this guy is. You say what you will about him saying, don't eat chicken because he's a nervous bird or whatever, all, all that stuff to say that he wants to duck competition is insane. Insane. Pete. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. Jim Harbaugh, I mean, I covered him at Stanford. He was he was a blast back then. It was pre, pre-social media. But the stuff he would do and say and the way he, he not only needled Pete Carroll back when USC was a roaring dynasty, but then he went and beat him as a 42-point underdog. No, he's his competitive chops. Uh, his competitive chops can't be questioned. I just I just question the team right now. I just don't think it's very talented. It's just, and I don't see a I don't see a clear path out of this for him there because of just the distinct talent like maryland has more talent than michigan right now you know i feel like i should be one of those cnn or uh, fox news or, or msnbc anchors to say we should just leave it there we'll have we have to leave it there up against it but i do have a couple more questions real quick hitters uh was there any any there there with urban meyer in texas pete i think it was a it was sort of a an open secret that was a that was a courtship but it's but it's not going to happen Okay, and Trevor Lawrence um, sitting there uh, knowing that uh, there are two teams that can have him right now unless there's somebody that comes out of nowhere and gives the old Mike Ditka King's Ransom to try and come draft him. Um, he, he is done at Clemson, right? He is not going to sit there and say the Jets are such a dumpster fire. I don't want to go. What are you hearing about that? Well, it's it's a good question. Trevor, I have a lot of respect for Trevor Lawrence and what he's done there, how he's evolved. Um, it's really hard. So when they throttled Alabama in the title game his freshman year, from that moment on, he was the number one pick in this upcoming draft. And it's really hard when your expectation is generationally great to live up to it and, and even succeed it. And he's done it all while, you know, really developing into a really engaging young man who's charitable. He was more thoughtful about Black Lives Matter than his coach was. I mean, he's really been impressive in every way. And, and it's a long way, and you ask for quick hitters, to say, like, I don't know. I I don't. I think he'll go to the NFL draft because that's probably the the smart fiscal thing to do. He doesn't seem to have the personality. He's he's likely not going to go with like a big high powered agency that could help orchestrate something like that. Like I think he'll go and try to give it his best shot. That's his, that's his personality. Pete, so I, you never know. Things can things can change. But that that's the way I see 
Trevor Lawrence playing out right now. Pete, so, we've got time between God, then God and bless him in New Jersey. <laughs> we've got a lot of time between uh, between uh, then and and now, and uh, appreciate the time. Thanks uh, greatly, and we'll we'll chat over the next couple of weeks as things begin to heat up. Thank you. Awesome, Rich. Appreciate it. Both. You got it. That's uh, that's Pete Thamel right there. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here. 